morning, friends. Good morning. It is good to have you here for worship as we gather together to praise God. Come on in, find a place to sit, um, greet your neighbor, and as we center our hearts and minds on God, let us go to God in prayer. Holy Spirit, come among us in this hour. Be with us in this time, in this place. Move among us and blow your wisdom into our words and into our actions. We ask that you would make your presence known to us through our singing, through our listening, and through the actions that we, that we live out in this time of worship and beyond. Be among us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now stand and join together in singing our opening songs. Come, let us worship and bow down. Come, let us worship and bow down. Before the Lord most holy, before the King of glory, come and lay your burdens down before the friend who's faithful, before the one who's able. Oh 
banana yeah do you like bananas <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about why I have a banana good morning I'm glad that you're here this morning thanks for coming to church today 
Um, today, we are talking about the next building block. Um, the first one we talked about was community, and you have to have people for community. The second one we talked about was story, and how Jesus tells stories, and how we can tell stories that um, encourage people to come and join us at church. Today, the third building block that we're talking about is service. Um, and we're going to be hearing a story from the Bible about um, some people who did not show service to others and then one person who did. So you are wondering why I have bananas back here. Um, and, an and an onion, yeah. So I'm gonna help, I'm gonna have these um, bananas to help me tell the story. So this is a banana and he is a good banana. And one day, the banana was walking along the road, and the banana got attacked. And the banana, uh, by some, some bad guys. And so the banana had everything stolen from him. And the bad guys hurt him pretty badly until he was injured. So Mr. Banana was not able to continue on his journey. In fact, he was so hurt that he had to just lay down on the ground. Yeah, and in a minute, another banana came walking by. And this banana saw the hurt banana. And he thought, this must be a trick. He's not really hurt. We're not going to help him. And so this banana walked on by. Was that a good way to show service to others? No. Then a second banana came by, and he saw the hurt banana lying down on the ground. And do you think he helped? You think he should help, yeah. But you know what? This guy said, this, this banana, he's hurt, and if I help this one hurt banana, I must have to help all the other hurt bananas in the whole world, so I can't, I don't have time for that. So I'm just gonna walk on by. Was that showing good service? No. no. But this guy, this guy's an onion. You may not know this, but onions and bananas, they don't like each other very much. Because do you ever hear of um, onion and banana pie? No, that's kind of gross. Or onion and banana ice cream? No, no. So what do you think this guy's going to do? Do you think he's going to help? Yeah. <laughs> it's a toss-up. <laughs> well, actually, this guy, Mr. Onion, he sees the hurt banana, and he stops to help. And he bandages up all the places where Mr. Banana got hurt. And he even gives him a little bit of money to help him go on his way. And so Mr. Banana and Mr. Onion turn out to be good friends after all. Now, did Mr. Onion show service to Mr. Banana? Yes, yes, yes he did. That is just a really weird way of telling the story of the Good Samaritan. Um, the Good Samaritan is a good guy who comes by to help someone who is hurt and in need. And Jesus tells this story in the Bible as a way to show us an example of how not to be and how to be in service with others. We don't wanna be about like those first two bananas that pass by, do we? No, we need to look for the ways that we can serve one another. Sometimes that might mean helping them bandage um, their boo-boos. Sometimes that might be sharing food with them. Sometimes it might just be offering a listening ear if someone is sad. So we can serve people in lots of different ways, and Jesus wants us to do that, and that's why he tells us these stories. Can you remember that as you go, in for, go forward into the week ahead? Great. Let's put our praying hands together and have a prayer. Dear God, help us to be in service to others. Help us to help one another in need. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Very good. Thank you for coming up, and you can go to Children's Church if you'd like with Miss Bonnie and Miss Laura. So this morning we have two gospel lessons. The first one is the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. It is the story of the commissioning of the disciples. So hear these words. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And our second lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. It is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Last week, we talked about the importance of story and sharing stories as a way to build a community and make connections. Um, So today, I'm going to begin with a story uh, to help illustrate why I consider service as another building block of a healthy faith community. Um, It's the story of a young woman who participated in a youth mission trip when she was just 16 years old. Who here has participated in a mission trip when you were a youth, youth age? Yes, good. Um, This young woman, this was her first mission trip and it happened to be the first trip for her out of the country. Um, And it was with a group called Um Them. Anybody know what that means? United Methodist Volunteers in Mission. Um, It's a a group that is all over the globe and and sends folks on mission. This particular trip was to San Luis, Mexico, a village outside the larger town of Puebla. The team was composed of youth and their leaders from around the Richmond area, a few from the first church that I served about 20 years ago, which was Bonaire United Methodist Church. And there were a few folks on this this team that this young woman knew, but there were a lot of folks on the team that she did not know. The team was tasked with um, helping to construct a United Methodist Church in the village of San Luis. And like many structures in Mexico, this church was made of concrete, reinforced by iron rebar rods. You know what I'm talking about? Um, By the time her team arrived, the construction had moved from the first floor to the second floor, so they were already, the teams before them had already made some good progress. Um, And those rebar rods were sticking out about a third of the way um, through the concrete pillars um, on the second floor. 
The young woman recalls that there was also a very large pile of rebar rods in the corner of the second floor. And so she and two other team members were given the morning task of moving that pile of rebar bars from that corner to the corner on the opposite side of the building. And there were no wheelbarrows, um, no other tools to assist them, but they put on their gloves and they just did it the old fashioned way, one bar, a couple of bars at a time. So none of the folks on this particular project were very strong. Um, and the building was filled with other volunteers, but they all had their own jobs. So they soon decided that they just had to do it. They just had to pick up one bar at a time, two bars if they could do it, three bars if they were really feeling energetic, and then they would move it from one corner to the other. Two hours later, after walking back and forth, carrying these iron rebar rods, they eventually got the pile moved from this corner to that corner. Um, thankfully, the others on the team had used a few pieces of the materials that they had moved um, to build columns near the area where they had placed the rods. After they finished moving the pile, they did a few other things to help the team, and then they all took a lunch break. And after lunch, the project supervisor comes over to the young woman and her rebar moving group and says, thank you for your work this morning. Now this afternoon, we're gonna move this pile of rebar rods that you've already moved here from this corner over to this corner. This young woman's 16-year-old logical mind was not very happy. Why did they have to move all the rebar from one place to the other place if only a small portion of what they moved was actually going to be used? It didn't make any sense to her. And she was hot, and she was tired, and she thought this whole thing was ridiculous, and this is not at all what she signed up for. One of the adults, he noticed what was going on, and he pulled her aside, they sat down, and they had a conversation. And he reminded her that they are from a different culture, and they have different work ethics, and they have different methods for doing things, and that part of being in service in another culture is learning to serve people by meeting them where they are. Amen. That young woman is now in her mid-50s, and that lesson about serving others has stayed with her over the years. Um, if you think that you're not learning anything on a youth group mission trip, you never know what might pop back up you know, 30 years later. Um, she's continued to share that story with others, including me, um, as a reminder for how Jesus calls us to be in service to others and with others. So many of us have been on mission teams, some local right here at Crozet United Methodist Church, like the Grace Grocery, and some beyond our immediate community, like um, the Appalachia Service Project trip that many of our young people uh, participated in just a few weeks ago. And then there are other mission efforts um, like the folks who are part of the United Women in Faith and um, how they serve people both locally and globally. So no matter who we encounter, every situation is different, and we have to remember the lesson learned by the young woman in the opening story. For Christians, service means meeting people where they are and offering care in places and in ways that they need help. Our job is not to fix their problems with our methods, or our job is not to show them project problems they didn't even know existed, right? Uh, um, Christian service is work done for others in the name of Jesus, in the way of Jesus. In that first text for today from Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is sending out the disciples to serve others in the way that he models. Um, Jesus urges in Matthew 28, 20, uh, to obey everything that I, Jesus, has commanded you. 
Jesus isn't sending them out to serve by their own methods or with their own agendas, but rather he sent them out to serve in the way that Jesus taught and modeled, by meeting people where they are and serving them in the way that best meets their needs. And if we're unclear about what that looks like, um, Jesus gives us lots of examples, the parable of the Good Samaritan being one of them. This is the second lesson that we heard today from the Gospel of Mark. Um, And as a reminder, a parable is a story used to make a point. Um, It's kind of like a fable, except for fables generally use animals, plants, and inanimate objects to make the point, whereas parables generally use humans. Um, It's a type of analogy. The parable of the Good Samaritan is likely a familiar story to all of us. Um, I bet most every single person in this room has heard it before. Um, We read in this passage that it isn't until the third person approached an injured man on the side of the road as an act of service um, in the form of physical care. It wasn't until that third person came by that service was offered. What that says to me is that the first two persons who passed by likely had some sort of fear about encountering this injured person on the side of the road. Um, Perhaps the first two passers-by were afraid because the injured man was someone from a different culture. Um, Perhaps they were afraid because he looked different. Perhaps they were afraid because he seemed too badly injured for them to be able to make a difference. It could have been any of those things, or it could have been something else completely. But Jesus gives us this story so that we will take our lead from the third passerby. And we know that person as the good onion, or the good Samaritan. This person overcomes any fear of the stranger and offers um, the personal assistance that is needed. Friends, this is service. This is Christian service, serving one another as Jesus teaches us. It's about serving everyone, not just those who look like us, not just those who we love, but everyone. It's about serving the least of these, those who are injured, those who are sick, those who are in prison. Service is a core building block of healthy Christian community. It is a disciple's faithful response to God's love offered to us in Jesus Christ. And I believe that to live as a faithful disciple, we must be in service to others. And for a church to be vital, it must understand the priority that should be placed on serving one another, those within our community and those beyond our boundaries. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, um, uses some different language when he talks about service. Um, You might have heard it. According to Wesley, uh, disciples of Jesus need to do works of piety and works of mercy. It's the works of mercy that are acts of service, which then Wesley divides into two more groups, individual service and communal service. The individual acts, which we are invited to do on our own, are things like um, doing good works for our neighbors, taking them to the doctor, um, helping them lift heavy items, taking food to them when they are sick. They also include just simply visiting the sick, uh, the imprisoned. Um, It includes feeding the hungry and giving generously to the needs of others. Communal acts of service, uh, which we are invited to do as a community, are seeking justice and working to end those big things like oppression and discrimination. It's about addressing the needs of the poor. Um, Examples of communal acts of service include uh, efforts to end discrimination against all persons in our denomination and beyond, um, or seeking to provide affordable housing and public transportation for persons in our community, or attempting to wipe out debt uh, for the most vulnerable persons in our communities. So, service is um, both our biblical instruction from Jesus 
and it is part of our Wesleyan heritage as United Methodists. I want to share with you one other important thing I've learned about service. Um, congregations which have service as part of their DNA and congregations which are filled with people who answer the call to serve in big and small ways, these are the congregations who are making a difference, a real difference in their community, in the name of Jesus. Now this might seem like a given to you here at Crozet because you have a pretty strong inclination to serve. Um, I noticed it immediately when I pulled into the Parsonage driveway on July 2nd. Our family arrived with two loaded down SUVs and a U-Haul. And as we pull into the driveway, there they were, a whole team of folks ready to help unload. Folks from 10 years old to 80 years old, friends. They were eager with smiles. They worked well together to get all of, all of our stuff inside um, in whichever room I indicated and not one inkling of judgment about what was coming off of the truck. I don't take that for granted, friends. Um, it doesn't happen everywhere. I can see clearly that service is in our DNA in lots of ways. First of all, the United Women in Faith and their ministry called Missions and Merriment, where they send greeting cards every month to our members who are homebound. Um, it might seem like a really simple thing, but you can't really even imagine the joy that it brings to folks um, who receive a card from their church family when they're unable to connect in person with their church family on a Sunday morning. That feeling is invaluable. I see service in our DNA when um, I hear from young people like Jack, who explains that participating in mission with the Appalachia Service Project changes your outlook on life and makes you think about how to help people far less fortunate than you. Jack recently participated in the ASP project um, to help people in the Appalachia area who need assistance with projects such as wheelchair ramps, roof replacements, and building porches and decks. I see service in our DNA through Grace Grocery and our work to provide food to those in need in our community. But it's more than providing food. It's one-on-one, -on -one, one human connecting with another human to offer mutual care and kindness in a world where these traits seem a little hard to come by sometimes, right? Friends, service is a building block. It is in our DNA here at Crozet United Methodist Church. And my prayer is that we will move forward in the weeks and months and years ahead to learn about new places where service is needed in our community and in our church family. May we discover all the places of hunger, thirst, nakedness, imprisonment, in whatever forms they present themselves and help uh, and may we seek to serve as Jesus serves in our community. May we seek to meet the needs that exist by listening for how God wants us to respond. Not by how we think we should respond, but how God wants us to respond. And in so doing, may we, like the Good Samaritan, offer ourselves in the spirit of Christ, seeking to reach the least, the last and the lost. I hope that you'll join me in listening to one another and to our community so that we can know where God is leading us to serve next. May it be so by the grace of God. Amen. As we prepare to um, offer our tithes and gifts this morning, um, I like to share one way that uh, your giving makes a difference. Um, did you know that just like secular businesses, our church conducts regular audits? 
Not a very sexy thing, but we do that, right? To ensure that we are using your financial gifts to meet our mission and vision, and to ensure that best practices are in place to manage the gifts that you are giving. Um, this summer, right now, our church business administrator, Debbie Bibbins, and our chair of finance, Mike Micucci, are working through an audit um, with an outside financial consultant. And if you know anything about audits, you know that they're not cheap, right? So when you give, to Crozet United Methodist Church. Of course you give to missions and ministry, but your giving also partially covers the cost of a regular business audit. So hopefully this gives you a little peace of mind that your gifts are being received and used in the best way possible. And now I invite the ushers to come forward and let us prepare to offer our tithes and gifts. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these gifts that have been given out of the goodness of our hearts. We ask your blessing on them that you might transform them to be of use both here in our church community and in our community that surrounds us. Bless the gifts and the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A few announcements um, this morning before you head off. Um, first of all, our Vacation Bible School is getting closer and closer, and all of you who are volunteering with Vacation Bible School are invited, encouraged, and actually required uh, to do a safe sanctuary training with Bart Isley. So um, here is your next option for being able to do that. We hope that you will be able to make it um, tomorrow evening, Monday evening, here at the church at 6 p.m. Um, definitely mark your calendar. If you have questions or if you have conflicts, you can um, connect with Bart and he will help you out. Um, next up, if you haven't been to one of the listening sessions um, where you're invited to share with me um, your dreams about or your dreams for the church, um, your ideas for ministries, I really hope that you will sign up to attend. We have two more. Um, one is this afternoon at 3 p.m., and that is at the home of Mike and Kathy Micucci. And then uh, the next one is Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. at the home of Hank and Jolly Wheel. So um, definitely sign up for one of those. I would really love to hear from you. I'd really love to meet you um, person to person. I'm still learning um, and putting names and faces together. So actually attending those helps me um, learn, learn who you are. So if you have any questions, I hope uh, you can reach out to Doug or you can reach out to me about getting connected to one of the listening sessions. And then finally, um, our United Women and Faith are uh, collecting items for the Crozet care closet this month. Our neighbors need your help. And so some of the items that they are collecting are diapers of any size, baby wipes, feminine hygiene items, toilet paper, paper towels, hand soap, and bar soap. You can bring those over to the church office. There's a box um, where 
the collections are being gathered. Um, so I think that's all we have for today. So as we conclude our time together, I invite you to stand and let us sing together um, our closing song, Hear Our Praises. opportunities to serve one another, being the hands and feet of Christ in our community. Go in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. From the mountain to the mountain.